Hi, my name is Shane Chagpar, and I'd like to take you through a walkthrough of our global best practice methodology, which is now available on the ServiceNow platform via Scoped App. The demo for today is going to be centered around the problem management version of the Scoped App, but an incident management version of this is also available and follows a similar flow. In combination with our world-class training, coaching, and consulting solutions, this app brings an aligned approach to the processes, technology, and people strategy of problem and incident management. In combination with functionality such as coaching loops, it provides a really powerful solution to get to root cause quickly, prevent reoccurring incidents, and increase IT stability. Some of the results clients have seen after using KT apps and KT tools include reductions in mean time to resolution, reductions in variation, improved first time fix rate, a reduction in backlog, and of course, increased customer experience and satisfaction as people generally rave about how well organized and approachable the team becomes. Let's walk through it. So we start here with the problem analysis form. This is a tool that is linked to a problem or incident ticket and when clicked opens up a screen that brings us into a series of steps helping us document our notes in a more rich way. It acts as a form that breaks down the series of things you need to do into a sequence of steps. For example, situation appraisal where I'm able to document in-flight actions and things that I'm supposed to remember things that I'm supposed to follow up on, a to-do list that's supercharged and collaborative. We also have an area where we can document our most probable causes and it's right up front and up first so that anyone viewing this ticket can understand where we might be at in terms of our problem solving or our incident analysis. Another great thing about this is that if you're looking for knowledge management one only needs to search for some of the keywords that might be here to pull up what was successful last time. In this case, for our network wizard experiencing a 90% CPU utilization, I can quickly see that the team discussed a failed memory module, a shared instance being overloaded, or a new patch introducing memory leaks. It happens that the patch introducing memory leaks ended up being the most probable cause and it looks like we still have some action items left in this ticket that need to get done. Thankfully, those action items are clearly understood and written, have a current impact, future impact, and time frame to help us set priority, and they've been assigned to individuals in our organization, including a follow-up time. As I scroll down on this form, I notice that I have rich data to specify the problem and evaluate possible causes. Now, incident managers might not be filling all of this out, but in an incident ticket, any of the KT style data that's collected can easily be turned into a copy paste that automatically drops this data into a problem ticket. So some of this actually could have come from the results of an incident being solved and the rest of this data can be entered from a problem manager or team trying to solve the problem. You'll notice we have all of our common KT elements, including our what questions, our where questions, our when questions, and our extent questions. Using these stubs, we can document information and the tool automatically organizes it into the correct sequence so that it's easy to read. You'll notice we have multiple columns. Our is column documents the facts that we've noticed, seen, verified, and tested as they exist in our environment. Our is not column discusses facts that have also been verified, but interestingly enough, although reasonably similar to the thing that's broken, are not experiencing a failure. The pairing of this type of data enables us to unlock a technique known as distinctions and changes. So we can ask ourselves, hey, how come version 12.4 has a break here, but 12.3 doesn't? What makes 12.4 unique? 
and we notice according to our notes about this client that this is specifically a patch versus a new install. We can then quickly ask subject matter experts, hey, what's changed around the patch and install process? And start to come up with ideas and filter our subject matter knowledge expert in a way that's powerful and visible to all. I have room to explain up to six possible causes that are titled in the above section here and documented in terms of their fit against these facts in this section here. I can clearly see that a failed memory module doesn't explain what's happening. And the reason why is because we would have expected both 12.3 and 12.4 to have this issue. Rather than having that piece of knowledge and discussion lost to some work note, I can organize it carefully here to say no. This cause fails because we are not able to explain why one version versus the other is having this issue. As I document my possible causes, it's clear to see what is a natural explanation with a yes, an assumption with an A, or something that just can't be explained with an N. This helps us sort, filter, and think through our ideas to allow the best to bubble up to the top. Great. Shane, I've got an idea. Now what? Well, it's time to select a fix. In the select a fix area, I can double click to add in new alternatives for solutions. If this was an incident, I might add in reboot, for instance. But in the problem management version of this, we've noticed that this ticket has force a new install, introduce a hotfix, or remove the patch until fixed. These are the three things that our team was discussing. And it's easy to see that this middle one here, as indicated by is this our best choice as yes, this is the one that we think that we're going to handle. We're going to introduce a, a hotfix. If I'm going to introduce this to a team lead or manager, I want them to take a look at this and notice that some of the key benefits is that it will require some dev time and it'll be a permanent fix. But some of our risks is because we're programming, we might introduce a secondary issue. And that's something that we discussed on our team. Again, rather than being lost to some audio recording or in a work note, it's clear and very present in this form to say what kind of thinking have we done and what discussion did that bring up. Knowing that introducing a hotfix could be tough, there's a section here called protect the fix where we discuss the likely causes of implementation failure and try to both prevent and contain in case it happens. We have some very clear triggers that we've also documented saying that if the client complains to the account manager we're going to reassure clients that the issue is in control. That's our current plan of action. Finally, every good problem management team wants to avoid future problems. Avoiding future problems means we need to think beyond the fix. And there's a couple of stubs here that we've made sure that you should answer if you're going to be professional about things. What other damage could this cause create? What caused this cause? What problems could this fix cause? Where else could this cause create problems? And what identical things need the same fix? Quick data entry in these sections allow this to be searchable, reportable, and could be rolled up into a dashboard so that you can present it to management and get some executive funding. If there's knowledge that needs to be attached, it can be attached here at the very bottom so that all of your vanilla service now functionality continues to work out of box. Do you have some clients that are not KT trained? No problem. You can set up security rules to make sure that this page is not visible for those who are not trained and is visible for those that are or some sort of hybrid. Overall, the Problem Management Scoped app provides a rich form for us to enter our data, see what we've done, and being able to recall what happened in a quick and effective way. Thanks for joining us today for our demo of the Problem Management Scoped app.